Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son, Lord God, Lamb of God. 
God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You who are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to it, hold to in what we do, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. And then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly, is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded at the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. So the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to all the nations his saving power. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. 
In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. So Jesus says, remain in my love, keep my commandments, and you will remain in my love. Now, remaining in Christ's love by keeping his commandments is about remaining united to him in will. So, like, if we think about that analogously from the standpoint of human relationships, oftentimes people will find it very difficult to remain united to each other in will. They find it difficult, really, to remain united to each other in love if their wills are just at odds with each other. But Christ is inviting us to remain in his love by remaining united to him in will. And he certainly remains united in love to the Father's will. And we, as members of Christ's body, are able to share in his loving union with the Father's will. And our share in that divine union of wills is the foundation from which we are able to love others as Christ loved us. It's about supernatural divine love, loving with supernatural divine love. Because without that, our capacity to love others ends up being based on something natural and earthly. And if you're anything like me, 
that often comes down to whether or not the person I'm supposed to love gets on my nerves. Because the thing is, I mean, look, we all have people that we just have a natural affinity for. You know, people who it is just, it's just natural and easy for us to love. For me, that is especially true for the members of my family back in California. So my mom, my dad, my, si my two sisters, my bro two brothers-in-law, my niece, and my three nephews. So whenever we're together, it's just we click so well, and we just we get along so well, and you know we have all this like ins all these inside jokes, and we kind of we quote movies to each other, and we just have a great time. It's it's natural and easy for me for me to love them. Now, this being Mother's Day weekend, and the month of May. The, the, which is the month of Mary. We just had the crowning of Mary today. And there's a lot, of, a lot of inspiration that we can draw from Mary in this regard. Because Mary treats everybody like family. She's a mother to us all. Now, a lot of the mothers I know, when it comes to their kids, they'll they'll pretty, they'll pr ultimately, they'll really put up with most things. Other people's kids, on the other hand, uh, that, that, you know, depending on how they're acting, that could be something a bit different. Mary puts up with everybody's kids. She's a mo and she's a mother, a spiritual mother, to everybody. And the reason she's able to do that so well is because she loves, not just with natural love, but with supernatural, divine love. And at the core of her capacity to love with that, nat that supernatural, divine love is the perfection of, her, of the union of her will with our Lord's will which we see exemplified at the Annunciation when she agrees to be the mother of our Lord. So on this Mother's Day weekend, on this day occasion of the crowning of Mary, let's all try to draw inspiration from Mary in really cooperating with the grace that our Lord is offering us to be united to him in will so that we can remain in his love and love others as he loved us. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, trusting in your divine providence, we now bring forward our petitions. 
that the church, led by our Holy Father and all the bishops, will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our archdiocese, that united with the risen Christ, we may be a presence of peace in the world and spread the gospel to all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That divisions in the world will be healed, violence will cease, and the peace of God's kingdom will bless the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers, that through the intercession of Mary, Mother of God, the Lord will bless them and reward them for all their sacrifices and loving care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families and young people, especially those preparing to graduate, that the Lord will bless them and guide them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to keep the commandments of Jesus in all of our thoughts, words, and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering of our parish, especially Sharon Abramson, Spruce Lynch, all COVID-19 victims and those that care for them, those who have asked for our prayers, and those for whom we have promised to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Olivia Charles, that they will be raised up to the fullness of heavenly life in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the soul of Patricia Hebert, for whom this mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are on the Holy Family prayer list and all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we entrust these prayers to your loving care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as I ought? And how reveal this wondrous gift so far surpassing hope or thought?
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Andrew, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, O Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we offer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So for communion today, we will have two communion stations, one on this side and one on this side. For those of you who would like to receive communion only in the hand, please use this communion station. For those of you who would like to receive communion on the tongue or in the hand, please use this communion station. And we're inviting you to come up one pew at a time. And so we just ask you to wait for our usher to invite your pew to come up and uh, we ask you to continue to form one single file line, minding your social distancing.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Next week, we will have donuts in the parish courtyard following the 9.30 a.m. and 12 noon masses. The Archbishop's annual appeal, United in Mission, begins next week. Holy Family Old Cathedral's goal for the year is $84,500. More information will follow in the weeks to come. On behalf of the Dominican Friars and staff at Holy Family, we want to wish all mothers a happy Mother's Day. Also, after the Mass, the Knights of Columbus will be offering roses to each of the mothers here. And now I invite all mothers to please stand for a special blessing. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Sorry.